Welcome back, Mzanzi. It's time to slow things down, be present and breathe. Because we've been learning how to stay sane, remain sane in an insane world through a book written by Helen Nicholson. Now, I believe a great way in which we can stay sane is uh, through breathing exercises. Now, obviously, we've got the specialist here, so I'm hoping she can take us through some of the easy steps on how we can stay sane and reach our sanity. Helen, we've been having such an incredible conversation, diving into this book, diving into some of the tips on how to be mindful, but maybe we can take a practical approach and also maybe assist them Zanzi right now in how they can work on that mindfulness. And one of those, obviously, breathing, right? A big, big, big component of that. Shall we give it a bet? Yeah, I'm keen. Are we so straight into if it? everyone on the... Um, watching make sure your feet are firmly on the floor take your hands and put them on your tummy and close your eyes and I'll count we'll do it once so we're gonna take a nice deep breath in through your nose four three two one hold our breath for seven six five four three two one and slowly exhale through your mouth like you're going downstairs eight seven six five four three, two, one. And you can slowly open your eyes. And generally, if you battle to sleep, that's also a great one. You can lie there and you can do it like numerous times and it just calms your whole body. So it's something that can kind of transition you from, let's say, the chaos into something a little bit more, more exactly. like a scene and something a bit more slow paced, right? And I think it's a good example and a good practice, something that we can incorporate before performing on stage, before coming onto the show, maybe. Exactly. I mean, even just closing eyes and breathing for me is always something that just kind of it allows you to ground and be present. Are there any other ways in which we can sort of uh, create a catalyst for just being mindful and being present? Are there any other uh, practices we could uh, achieve? So two that I can I immediately think of. Yeah. One is practicing gratitude. Okay. All of us have got things to be grateful for. And what I realized with the research with the book, how negative our brain actually is. I mean, our brain is designed to protect us. It's constantly looking for things yeah. that can go wrong. So our brain is actually not designed to make us happy. And to practice gratitude before you go to bed every night, write down all the things that you're grateful for. It's a complete game changer. And around your work is stop multitasking. You know, this was a huge one for me because I always okay. define myself around my ability to multitask. Yeah. And when you do one thing well, do it at a, one thing well at a time. You know, switch off your WhatsApp, switch off your email notifications and do one thing um, at a time because our brain is not designed to have 700 tabs open at the same so, time. So speaking practically again, I mean, let's, let's use an example. We, we get into the office, it's Monday. Everybody's probably going to be doing that right now. Overwhelmed with some emails that they didn't answer on Friday, knowing that they've got a big deadline on Tuesday. How do they become, how do they get on top of their game? How do they manage that inevitable stress that they're going to be incurring? And the fact that Mondays for, gen, for, for people are generally very overwhelming. The first step, what would be the process in dealing with this day before we get even tackle the work? What would you suggest? So I would do periods of deep work. So okay. deep work are preferably 90 minutes where you switch off your phone, you switch off your email and notifications, and you do whatever is the f most important thing of that day, and you do it first. So and prioritize then, that main thing that's really like exactly. bothering you, okay. And then you start, because the problem is that our brain doesn't like being yanked around all over the place. So when you're busy in an Excel spreadsheet and then your WhatsApps are going and your email notifications, even if you don't go and open that email, your brain goes there and then we constantly switching gears the whole time and your brain doesn't like that and it makes us um, less productive and it also makes us unhappy that's why we get to the end of the day and we feel like we've been busy but we haven't actually accomplished much because we constantly task switching and that would be my biggest one if you're starting work on a Monday do one thing well at a time 90 minutes deep work and then you know move into the other stuff I absolutely love that and of course a great way to start the day tackle the biggest obstacles that you have because the rest is kind of downhill from there right exactly. it's just easy well Helen you've been an absolute pleasure to chat to obviously I think you've educated me and the rest of Mzanzi especially on something so important right now mindfulness and on top of that we've also got this incredible book and giveaway for you Mzanzi so come through and answer the question about what helps you to stay sane in a busy world and you can answer that question on our Facebook page the terms and conditions do apply that's on the expressoshow.com but of course that competition does close 12 o'clock on Wednesday you definitely want to have this book in your arsenal it's not just a book it's a tool it's a, something that can unlock all the potential that you have within you and allow you to just be more present and more mindful and of course stay sane in all the sanity. Helen, thank you so much. I hope you have an incredible start to your week and you too, Mzanzi. Thank you. <laughs> Cheers.